Alrighty, so we just finished some practice problems for large, uh, um, smaller, small sample confidence intervals. Let's go ahead and move on to sample proportions. So, real quick, um, before we kind of dive on in, I kind of want to give you some background with the sample proportions. A proportion is basically P and Q still. So we're going back to kind of binomial, there's a success and a failure, there's a probability of success and a probability of failure. So it's basically two outcomes. We're interested in one of them, that's going to be our P, whatever we're not interested is going to be our Q. And so, that's kind of just to set the tone a little bit. So, z-scores. You have to standardize normal distributions in order to find probability. So, we're kind of going back to this idea of z-scores. You standardize by changing all the sample means into z-scores. So, that's what we did before, right? Now, we're going to change it to proportions. We're going to do sample proportions. And we'll see how that works in a second. Remember before, z-score represents how many standard deviations away. A value is away from the mean. Now in this case with the sampling distribution but in particular proportions they represent the number of standard errors and this is sigma p hat. So p hat actually let's just keep going we'll talk about that in a second. And a sample proportion is away from the mean. Mu p hat. So instead of x bars, we now have p hats. And so p hats represent sample proportions. You can see it in our breakdown of my table here. Um, so a sample proportion, basically, what this all kind of goes back to with the binomial, and I keep saying binomial because it's kind of like we've seen that before, so hopefully it kind of bridges the gap a little bit. Um, but let's say we're flipping quarters, right? The population proportion for the number of heads that you should get is basically the probability of success, right? So it's 50%. So there's a 50% chance that you get heads. So that's considered our population proportion. Basically something that we assume, something that's given, something that we already know is our proportion. But now, let's say we flip 20 coins. It may not always be the case that we end up with 10 exactly heads. Does that make sense? So that's considered our sample proportion. right? And so it's based off of a sample. We have a number of successes divided by the total. That's our probability or our sample proportion, right? And then on average, this average um, proportion should be 50%, but again, there's some variability, right? And so if we have a lot of samples, we should be very close to that average proportion. But if we have maybe like five samples, for example, you know, flipping quarter five times, you're not gonna get 2.5 heads. Does that make sense? You may get actually five heads, you may get one head, you may get zero heads. They're all possible, but it's most likely, so on average, you should be getting 50%. Does that make sense? So, kind of bringing it all back home. So to get the z-score, it's the sample proportion. So remember before, it was sample mean minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard error of the mean. Here, it's sample proportion minus the mean of the sample proportions divided by the standard error of the sample proportions. So, in this case particularly, so you can see this here, that the mean of the sample proportions is that population proportion, or basically the average. What's the average prop proportion you should expect? So I'm just going to say this is P, but again, I wrote it there just so, to give you guys kind of some, some constant, right? So our z-score is always going to be some number minus its mean divided by the, the measure of spread. Cool. And now our standard error is the square root, so all under the square root, it's P, which is our population proportion, Q, which is the population basically probability of failure, essentially, and then divided by n, which is again our sample size. So, let's get started. Once the mean and standard, e oh, I'm sorry. Once the mean and standard error are determined, the process to get a probability is the same as before. So literally, just like once you get a z-score, from there on out, it's exactly the same as we did before. You shade the area of interest, calculate a z-score for each sample proportion now, instead of sample mean. Find the probability associated with this z-score that you just calculated, and then decide if the probability corresponds to the shaded area. And if it doesn't, find it. So the probability of someone voting for Obama in 2016 is 50%. Totally made up, always. <laughs> What's the probability that more than 60% of people out of 100 vote for the opponent? So we're interested in voting for the opponent, right? So in this case, our average voting for the opponent, even though this is P, so that 
is actually our Q. Because we're interested in how many people vote for the opponent, not for how many people vote for Obama, right? So our P is one minus that, right? Because if it's, there's two outcomes, probability someone voting for Obama is 50%, probability of voting for the opponent is also 50%. So our P then is 50. And I know it's 50-50, so it's the same, but it's very important. So for example, if that was 40, and you put 40 in this problem here, you would get a totally different answer. Because again, you're not interested in people voting for Obama. You're interested in people voting for the opponent, right? So the opponent still ends up being 50%. Now our standard error is the square root of PQ time over N. So P in this case is our population proportion. So on average, what percent of people vote for Obama? I'm sorry, the opponent. <laughs> so it's 50. Failure is then 50, because it's 50% 50 one way, 50% the other way. Divided by our sample size. So our sample size in this case is 100. We have out of 100 people, what's the probability you get 60 or more? So this ends up giving you 0.5. Actually, it's 0 0.05, I'm sorry. Cool, so our standard error is 0 0.05, our measure of center is 50, and again, these are sample proportions and z-scores as associated with each sample proportion. What, is, what should 50 get? 50% 50 should get what z-score? Should be getting zero, right? Because again, it's still the midpoint. And now, let's get z-scores for the probability. So 60%. Let's do our z-score magic, so we get p hat minus the population proportion divided by the standard error. Right, and I put p instead of mu p hat because again, the population proportion is the average. Right, so here we have 0 0.6, 0 0.60 minus 0.50 divided by 0 0.05. And here we have 0 0.60. We're looking at the area above that, so more than 60 out of 100, right? And so we're getting that z-score, so it's 0.10 over 0.05, so that's 2. So that's a z-score of 2. And now our next step, from here on out, it's basically the same. Once we get our z-score, we just look, up, look it up in our table and then decide if that's our answer or not. So let's look it up in our table. So a z-score of 2.00 gives me, sorry, so 2.0 gives me 47.72. So it's 2.00. So 47.72, let's go back up, write that in where it corresponds to, right, just like we always do. So that corresponds to the area between 50% and 60% of people voting for the opponent. This is 4772. So then is that our answer? No, right? So the probability of p hat being greater than 6.60 is 0.5 minus that 0.4772. So we end up with 0 0.0228. There's about a 2% chance that more than 60% of people will vote for Obama. I mean, I'm sorry, for the opponent, my goodness. Okay, so referring to example one, what are the chances that out of 100 people, between 62 and 70 people vote for Obama? So in this case, we're looking at Obama as our success, right? But still, our average is still going to be 50, right? Because if 50 people on average should vote for the opponent, 50 people should vote, 50 percent of people should vote for Obama. Let's get our standard error. Our standard error is p times q over n, right? All under the square root. But our p is 0.50, or q is 0.50 as well, and our sample size didn't change. We're still talking about 100 people total, right? So if we look up there to the previous example, it's exactly the same. So our standard error is going to be still 0.05. Does that make sense? So between 62 and 70 people, so 62 out of 100, right? So that gives me p hat 1 is 62 out of 100. 
and p hat 2 is 70 out of 100. So that's 0 0.62 and 0 0.70. Cool? So again, we put that back into our map, so we get 0.62 is here-ish, <laughs> and 0.70. And now, we're looking for the area in between, so let's go ahead and shade that. These are all p-hats. Our next step is to convert all those p-hats to z-scores, right? So what does 50 get? Zero, good. And now, convert these guys. So Z is, so let's do our P hat minus the average proportion, which is 0.50, divided by the standard error. Let's do that one more time right here. So we get 0.70, right, which is a sample proportion, minus 0.50 again, divided by 0.05 again. Because we're still talking about the same mean and same standard error. So this gives us 2.4, and this gives us 4.0. So what's our next step? Once we get our Z's, we look them up in our table, right? So 2.40. So that gives me 49.18. And then 4, we look that up and we don't find anything. Crazy. Anything past here, just assume it's 0.5, right? So 49.18 and 0.5. So let's go ahead and write that in. So here we have 4918 up to 62, right? Because that's our z-score of 2.4. And then from the mean all the way to that 0.70 is 0.5. So how do we get the probability between? We're looking for the probability that p hat is between 0 0.62 and 0 0.70, right? So we look up, I mean, I'm sorry, we do a little math to get our answer, right? So we have 0 0.50 is a big one, 0 0.49.18 is in between. So to get the little leftover, it's just the difference of the two. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.49.18. So we have 0 0.0082. Cool. So that's basically how we work with proportions. You can get a z-score, find a probability just like we did before. Um, let's go ahead and do a couple practice problems and then we'll move on to confidence intervals for proportions.